Good evening, Sheridan Hills. Good evening. Welcome to Wednesday Recharge once again. I am so privileged to be able to be here with you tonight and some of my closest friends. Um, tonight, we're going to get together and we're going to talk about what does the church really matter in our lives? What, is it, what does it mean to either do church online or to do church in person? And what's the difference? Um, so tonight, we're going to talk about that and uh, just enjoy some great things from this. Chuck Samaras is a retired colonel from the United States Army and a uh, lay leader in our church. Just a, a real encouragement. He and his wife have come in and serve in many different ways. Pastor Jason, our student pastor, is going to be with us as well. And uh, Pastor Lucas is leading our discussion tonight as well as leading us in song. So we're going to do that. You know, Sunday morning was a sweet time. Apparently, God was speaking to many people in the life of our church. Um, I preached the message entitled, True Christians Press On Regardless. And uh, many of you have watched that message, and some of you have sent messages to the church office saying that God had spoken to you, encouraged you, challenged you, maybe inspired you to get back in the game, to not give up, but to press on regardless. I shared with you one of my favorite illustrations, the press on regardless race, had that little mini landing with the tire popping off. And somebody said, yeah, but wasn't that guy out of the race? I mean, it was over for him. Well, what you learn about guys who love the POR race, and you have to watch the sermon to understand what I'm saying, but the guys who love the press on regardless race, oh, their tires may pop off on one point, but they get another car and they're back in it the next year and they keep pressing on regardless. You know, sometimes that's us. You know, sometimes we'll be out and... Um, but the whole challenge is, is to continue on with the Lord, to get back in and keep going. So it's times like this that can help us with that. You know, music has a way of also encouraging us and building us up. And it also teaches us truth. It's not just about a feeling, but it's also the connection of the mind. In our church, we love to sing substantive songs, songs that really have a message. And so we're gonna sing two songs tonight since we're talking about the church. We're gonna sing two songs that are all about the church. And the first one is called, O oh Church Arise. And if you just kind of think through the lyrics of this, maybe go back and look it up online, you will be blessed as you look at the depth of this. And then the other church that we're gonna sing, the other song that we're gonna sing, and in fact, the first one is, The Church is One Foundation. And again, a theologically rich song, a deep song of truth. So think through these words. What is the church's one foundation? It is our Lord Jesus Christ. And it's the church that he builds. It's the church that he saves. It's the church that he empowers. It's the church that he indwells. And one day it's the church that will finally be with him once and forever. And so sing with us, lift up your voice and sing with us. Sing. O church, arise and put your armor on. Hear the call of Christ our captain. For now the weak can say that they are strong in the strength that God has given. With shield of faith and belt of truth, we'll stand against the devil's lie. An army bold. Whose battle cry is love, reaching out to those in darkness. Our call to war, to love the captive soul, but to rage against the captor. And with the sword that makes the wounded whole, we will fight with faith and valor. When faced with trials on every we know the outcome is secure In Christ who have a price for which he died An inheritance of nations Come see the cross where love and justice meet As the Son of God is stricken Then see his foes like crushed beneath his feet for the conqueror is risen and as the stone is rolled away and christ emerges from the grave this victory march continues 
news to the day every eye and heart shall see so spirit come put strength in every stride give grace for every hurdle that we may run with faith to win the prize of a servant good and faithful as saints of old still light the way pretending triumphs of his grace we hear their call of hunger for the day when in Christ we stand in glory Amen. sing the churches the church is one foundation is jesus christ the lord she is his new creation by spirit and the word I hope and pray that you just kind of let those words flow over you, great, great depth in each one of them. Tonight we do come What does and look at this question of what does the local church matter? Uh, what is the local church? Excuse me. What is the local church and why does it matter? Um, there are some notes on the website. If you'd like to download them, they'd be a help for you. In fact, you can hit pause right now and go print them out if you need to. Um, but I want to encourage you to have the notes. You can see the passages that Pastor Lucas has for us. Pastor Lucas, lead us in our discussion a little bit on what is the local church and why does it matter? Right, so this is a, a great question, right? We, we belong to the church. Uh, you are tuning in to, a, uh, to the church um, service right now. So the question of what the local church is is important. Right. Um, if you drive around Sheridan streets, if you drive around Hollywood, you see many churches. What makes the local church a church and what makes the local church the local church? So I was reading through Romans and I ran into this little verse, Romans 1, 7. And it struck me that in this verse, Paul was actually describing what the church in Rome was. It's simple, it's straightforward, and helps us understand both who we are as a church and what we're called to do. So in Romans 1, 7, the first half of the verse, he says this, To all those in Rome, he's referring to the church here, who are loved by God and called to be saints. 
What a simple statement. Mm. But but it's 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 special for us to look at this because it informs us of so much. So today I just want to work through these two points here. Uh, the church is a group of believers who is one who are one loved by God and two called to be like God, right? That word saints, holy, hmm. God is holy, and we are in the church so that we will be holy as God is holy. So first, loved by God. It is the love of God that draws sinners to the church. Doesn't the Bible tell us that, right? We love because he first loved yeah. us. Love has to be awakened in us by the love of God first. And God's love draws us in. Uh, a few years ago, actually several years ago, um, a church was discovered, a very ancient church was discovered under an old church in Jordan. And, and they came to realize that this church that was underneath uh, the, the old church might have been the first Christian church ever. Now, we don't know. We're not certain about that. Um, but it was interesting that inside that church, they found the words, these words, the 70 beloved by God. They did not find the 69 beloved by God or the 71. You see, that number mattered because everyone who was a part of that church was beloved by God. The church is a group of people who were drawn in by the love of God. We see this in, in Ephesians 5, verse 25. Uh, uh, Paul speaks to the husbands of how they ought to how they ought to relate to their wives, and he immediately parallels the love that a husband ought to have to the love that Christ actually displays to the church. He says, Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church. And how did Christ love the church? He gave himself up for her. It is true that God loves the world, the world, right? We, we know that. God loves everyone. But there is a special way in which God loves the church. Christ only gave his life up for the church. Mm -hmm. And it is the sacrifice that makes the church the church. We just sang this, these beautiful words from this old hymn. The church's one foundation is Jesus Christ, her Lord. You see, the church is built on Jesus Christ. That's right. She is his new creation by spirit and the word. Th this line here is deep, right? I think of Romans 5. All the world, mm. right, is either found in Adam or in Christ. The church is found in Christ. So humans by nature inherit Adam's sinful nature, but the church by the work of Christ receives the righteousness of Christ. We talked about that last week. Um, from heaven, he came and sought her to be his holy bride. You see, the church does not initiate, right, the pursuit. It is God who pursues right. uh, his bride. Um, and with his own blood, he bought her, redeemed her, right? We were before enslaved to sin, but the blood of Christ buys us out of this slavery and for her life so that we may live he died hmm. what what a great hymn i encourage if you don't know this hymn i would encourage you to just youtube it listen to it there are some great versions on youtube and i think this what hymn were you would, saying about the tune that we just sang the, the tune, tune was actually written by um charles wesley great uh, grandson so charles ah, wesley was okay. the was one of the great um uh, um, leaders of the first uh, Great Awakening in America, um, and uh, he wrote over 6,000 hymns. Along with his brother, John Wesley, they began the, the Methodist Church, mm -hmm. which, um, which is back then was a great faithful church. Today, there's still faithfulness found in some Methodist churches, right. um, and 
And um, so a great grandson wrote the tune. The grandson, a grandson, grandson uh, wrote the tune, and Samuel Stone wrote the words. That's right. That's right. And Samuel Stone, if I'm not mistaken, he was a a Church of England uh, minister. Hmm. Hmm. So we see here the love of God that draws us in, but we are also we also see here um, that we're not only loved by God, but we're also called to be like God. You see, friends, we got to understand this. We have to understand this. The love of God is a transforming love. God does not love us and leaves us to be Mm. the same way we were when we came to Him. Right? Just as I am is a hymn that you can only really sing once. (laughs) Because when you come to God again, you ought to be transformed. Because God begins a good work in those that He calls mm. to Himself. So, so the Christian cannot look at the love of God and say, I'm done. I'm good. The Christian ought to look at the love of God and understand that if you truly love God, you will desire to be like God. 1 Peter 1, 15 through 16, we hear this call. Peter here, he quotes the Old Testament, right? He quotes uh, Leviticus 19, and he says, But as he who called you is holy, you also be holy in your conduct. Since it is written, you shall be holy, for I am holy. This is a calling. Peter is challenging us to live a life that is opposed against dead to sin in a life that is alive for Christ, right? It's a, a life that, that is dedicated, devoted to Christ. So, so the, the, the life of the church ought to be a life that models victory over sin, that models holiness. But then this is interesting because here Peter tells us, we ought to work hard on being holy. But then he goes on to say in chapter 2 of the same letter, chapter 2, verse 9, But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, and a people for his own possession. Now Peter is not telling us that we need to be holy. He's actually telling us we are holy. And which one is it? Are we to pursue holiness? Are we to fight sin? Or are we to rest in the fact that we are holy and we have victory over sin? Peter has no problem saying that both things are true. Because we are holy, we grow in our holiness. Because God has loved us, we grow in our love towards Him. And this is the tension of the already, not yet, right? We are already made holy, but we are not yet perfectly sanctified. We are already saints before God, but we are not at the end of the race. So this goes so well with what Pastor Andrew talked about on Sunday, Mm. right? We ought to pursue this race with diligence, right? We ought to fight Mm. sin with every atom in our bodies Mm. because we are holy therefore we ought to become or grow increase in our holiness Uh, theologians helpfully explain this uh, as the difference between positional sanctification we we are positioned right where we stay on this position of being holy before god but there is also the progressive aspect of our sanctification. We're growing to be more and more like Christ in our walk, right? So, so uh, uh, First John tells us that when we see Christ, we will be as He is, right? But we're not there yet. So until Christ returns or until He calls us, calls us home, we ought to pursue this progressive aspect of our sanctification, as we are reminded that God does not condemn us for our sins. So I think both things are true. Both things are right. Yeah. So I, I wonder, what are some of your thoughts on some of these things that, that were just shared from this 
brief verse in the book of Romans. That that is a, a great first glimpse. I think that's so cool to all those who are in Rome who are loved by God and called to be saints. And he's talking about the church, obviously. He's talking about God's people. And think about all of the hysterical madness that was going on in Rome in that day. And yet amidst all of that milieu of disaster and sin, because the Roman Empire was notoriously corrupt and, and everything else um, and, and sinful, yet God's people were popping up all over the place as God was calling them to himself. And he does the same thing in South Florida. He does the same thing in Bangladesh. He does the same thing in, in Shanghai. He does the same thing everywhere as he's calling people to himself. But that last part where you were just talking about positional sanctification and progressive sanctification, I'll just never forget studying for the first time the book of Ephesians when I was in college and discovering, well, the first half of Ephesians is all about our position in Christ, the fact that we're saved. This is everything Christ has done for us. And then the last half of Ephesians, chapter 4, 5, and 6, it's only got six chapters, so the first three are about your position in Christ, and then the last three chapters are about your practice mm-hmm. as believers, your, your practice as Christians. So here's who you are in Christ, now here's, who you're supposed to, here's what you're supposed to act like in Christ. And um, it's just so encouraging to me to know that he has forgiven me, and he has made me his, and he says that I'm holy. Well, I need to act like that then. There's certain things that just don't go with the Christian life. So that's, that's why I need to continue to jettison those things and find the way of Christ, which I think is what this discussion about is about tonight, is about, well, how do we practice out our progressive sanctification? How do we become more like God? How do we become more holy in this life? And I think that's what the church is all about. That's what we are to do together and to help one another together. So, And in many ways, I mean, it's so important for us to consider this. We are not very different from the church in Rome, right? Right. Uh, we're, many of us come from different walks of life, right? Many of us have different um, training skills, professions, vocations, backgrounds, right? And and we come together. And one of the one of uh, Paul's goal in in writing Romans is he is really seeking to bring unity um, uh, among the members of the church in Rome. Um, and we actually don't see a, a lot of really big problems in Rome. Um, we see problems in in the, the church. In the church, right, right? Not in the city, but in the church, there seems to be some some brothers who are strong in the faith, some brothers who are weak in the faith, and Paul is promoting some unity there. We don't see the problems that we see in 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 uh, First Corinthians or in, in the churches in in Galatia. But Paul is not Paul is not saying, "Okay, church church in Rome, you're doing well, so you can let your guard down." Right. He's not saying that. He's saying. Mm. Um, you ought to work hard to be unified. And I think that that's so important for Sheridan Hills because we're not talking about this because we're concerned that Sheridan Hills is doing poorly in our unity. Actually, Sheridan Hills Mm -hmm. is remarkably unified. Mm -hmm. But as we look at what Paul is telling to the church in, in Rome, we think we ought to pursue that as well, right? This did not happen by chance. This happened because by God's grace, Sheridan Hills has pursued unity for decades and generations, Mm. Mm. right? So I think it's really relevant for us, even members of a church that has a healthy community, to consider what should we be doing to grow in our communal holiness. Now, Chuck, we're so thankful you're here. Yeah. You are the you are the layman among the pastors. <laughs> so you have really important things to tell us here. One of the things that I would really love for you to, sh- to talk to us about is just your journey. Um, you've been part of many different churches. You've traveled a lot because of your profession uh, with the U.S. Army. And you've landed here uh, in South Florida. And you've landed at Sheridan Hills Baptist Church. And you have just grown so much in, in how you've been involved 
in, in so many ways, you know, in, in, in your knowledge, in your uh, love for the people, your love for service. So tell us a little bit about your journey and tell us about your you coming into the life of Sheridan Hills Baptist Church. Well, and before I forget, you know, so as you were going through that, Lucas, it uh, it tied so well for me back to the the question, right? What what is the local church, and why does it matter? Because and I so I drew on my little thing here. So we know we're loved by God, but there's actually a leap, I think, from knowing you're loved by God to being called to be like God. I guess you know the difference between positional sanctification and your progressive sanctification. And so for me, as, as a layman and someone who, and as I talk about my journey, you'll see this, uh, unless you're engaged with a, a Bible-believing, expository, preaching t- church, you don't even know that. You don't even know it's a requirement, to be perfectly honest with you. I know I didn't. Mm-hmm. And, and mm-hmm. so I knew I was loved by God. I knew I was baptized. And so, you know, back in 99, got saved in the church. A group of friends brought me to church. I got saved. I had just gotten married to Kathleen. She was in Alaska. I was at Fort Benning. I was there, honestly, by myself. I knew Kathleen was so saved She's at the time. She's in Alaska, so, and you're in Georgia. So... Yeah, wow. and the whole wedding process is another story. <laughs> was but it a virtual it, wedding? It, it, no, no, it was uh, Elvis in <laughs> Reno, Nevada. But <laughs> but once we got over it, no, it wasn't Elvis. It was not. It wasn't Elvis. But it was in Reno, Nevada <laughs> at the Commissioner of Civil Marriages. So, uh, and it was a whole army requirement. But but Kathleen was already saved. We we were separated. Uh, I met some friends who, who brought me to a church, a, 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 a good a, a church that taught well, but not clearly. Does that make mm. sense? Mm. So it was, it, was, it was a good teaching church. We had the notes. You know, for me, I gained a lot out of it, but I still wasn't getting the clarity that I ne- apparently needed. I didn't mm. know I needed it at mm. the time. Um, and really, what was interesting is the engagement there is I really never expanded out of the original circle of friends that brought me. There was a, you know, a handful of couples that I hung out with, but it didn't expand beyond that. And they weren't involved, really, engaged in the church beyond Awanas, you know, the standard things right. that you would do in a church. Um, you know, then fast forward to Fort Leonard, Missouri, uh, the story that I just told you. So we were, ended up in a, a small expository teaching, independent Baptist church, uh, maybe 200 folks, and got engaged in the growth group for the first time. Mm. <clears throat> and uh, by there they called it Sunday school. They were very old school. And, uh, you know, we were there for probably a year going to the Sunday school. And one day I walked up to the, we had the, you know, the el- older senior pastor who had retired was the teacher. And I said, hey, is there anything I can do for Sunday school? Do you want me to do anything for you? And he's like, oh, well, let me think about that. And I, weeks and months probably went by. And I kept asking, oh, are you sure? And, and then finally said, you know, could you open us in prayer? Mm. I can do that. Sure. You know, you just got to give us the opportunity. And, and so, you know, when we went to Boston, literally no engagement in Boston. You've talked about how hard it is planting churches up in the Northeast. Mm. Totally disconnected from any church. Uh, came down here to, to Florida, bounced around a few churches in Miami while we lived down in Coconut Grove. And then when we moved up to Hollywood, you know, Kathleen found you guys online and we came in and I think this is probably it. Expository mm. teaching, great engagement by, you know, all the folks around us. You know, I remember specifically, you know, Carrie Johnson and Fred Steen, mm. you know. Yeah. And we probably came here for eight months or so, not... 100% consistent, and then ended up in starting point. Yeah. And uh, that was the first time I had ever seen anything like that done in any church anywhere. Mm-hmm. And Kathleen and I were like, oh, yeah, you know, this is it. And uh, sure. Because in starting point, we try to explain this, right? Right. I mean, no, we, that's we, right. We, that's, we that, try to say, hey, what are you looking for? This is what we're trying to be. You your know? whiteboard drawing in starting point was the most clarity that I had, had ever seen Mm. ever in my life and that changed a lot for us Mm. uh as we you know continue our walk and um and then i kept telling you how oh that was the best starting point is fantastic he said oh yeah you want to help and i (laughs) someone just asked me to help sure i can help you know and then and had you ever run sound for anything before uh 
Yeah. You yeah. Have? Oh, okay. yeah. I've done that kind of thing. Hey, if you're a captain or major in the army, you've done that before. Okay. Okay. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. There's some so colonel or general the army officer helped who's, train who's got you, you flipping for, slides. Oh, yeah. For a starting point. Good. Oh, yeah. That's yeah, good. yeah. 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 You, and you weren't the hardest one I've ever had to do that for. <laughs> so. But really, they, you know, that, this is the, the first place that, uh, the first church that we've been engaged like this. And like I told you before, you know, I've spent more time physically in and around this church in two years than I've ever done in any church in my entire life, including Catholic church, you know, when Grown I was a up. kid. Wow. Wow. And so for us, uh, you know, it's been a total difference. And, and, you know, just today we were looking at, at homes and because this is one of the things that will cause us to stay in Hollywood. Right. You know, right. it really is. Uh, you know, why wouldn't you? I mean, unless, unless, unless there was a really good reason to leave, right. which we can't find one, a secular reason to leave that right. we can't find one. You know, why would you leave this if you didn't have to? Right. And so, and so the the, the flag is mm. being planted as Amen. we speak. You know? Buying a house. Yeah. That's great. Mm. You know, Chuck, I, as you were saying that there is a leap between being loved by God and becoming like God, I just thought it, it's that's so true. And and sometimes. Um, unfortunately, Christian teachers and churches don't make that leap, no. right? No. So we all want to preach, oh, you're loved by God. But it's important for us to say, you, you are loved by God, and the love of God will compel you to be holy. Th those two messages cannot be separated, right? Um, this, uh, one of the songs that we just sang, we sang, come see the cross where love and justice meet. The love of God poured out, right? And the justice of God, right, pour out as well, meet at the cross. God is both. So if we're going to grow to be like God, we ought to grow also in, in, in our love, but also in our holiness. So I thought mm -hmm. that that was... That was great. It reminds me also in the youth ministry, we've been studying through the book of Ephesians. So what you were commenting on in the book of Ephesians really flows right with what we're reading here as well. Because, again, the first three chapters of Ephesians is the position of, of what you find yourself or how you find your spiritual blessings in Christ right there from the very beginning in Ephesians 1. And it's a it's a display of the love of God. Right. The father chooses his the the son he it, because of his blood we are redeemed so we're bought out we we are we are purchased um, and not under the bondage of sin and thus called to be like God in that regard and that what the father and and the son has has done when we think about that and really reflect on that then it causes us to do the latter part of Ephesians which is four through six and that is just how we live that out. Where we, we just talked about last week, where children obey your parents and the Lord for this is right. Talking about masters and, and servants and, and the, the servant responding to the master or obeying the master and uh, mm -hmm. all those things as, as we work out. And even in Ephesians 4, when we're talking about the church being unified there as well mm -hmm. and the gifts mm -hmm. that God has given. So. And, I, and I just, for, for us, that helping to make that leap is that local church is that community because when you walk in here you can you can literally feel the love i mean you can feel the love of the people that are in this church they love the church they love everybody around them and 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 when you feel that i mean it, it's a draw it draws you in and you actually begin to understand it's the love of god is manifested so that for someone like me i can actually see it i'm like wow that's what it looks like, you know? So you get mm -hmm. the teaching, but you also get that, that, that family that comes around you and, and really, hold, like, you, like you, the difference between your contract and your, and your uh, covenant, Co covenant, right? Contract, right? Yeah. It's right, it's there. And so for us, that, that's something that means so much mm -hmm. is to see God's love manifested in a body of believers who actually really do love each other. Yeah, you know you can tell uh, just you know having conversations with folks in the community group or trading texts with them or doing the Zoom. I mean, it's so different. Um, anyway, when we're together, you see it manifest in 
time spending in before service or after service, people wanting to spend time together and talk and not really wanting to leave. <laughs> now in this time, you know, it's it's the text and the longing. The how many times have we heard from everyone else? Oh, I'm just so longing to be back together. I want everyone, you know, I well, just even, can't wait for the day. Well, even when happen. we do the Zoom growth group <laughs> with the high school kids, they can't hang up. <laughs> they can't hang up. It's like, yeah. if I, you know. And they're the, still having to do the, Zoom for school and right, everything else. Right, but when right. they get together with church kids, they're, right, they're enjoying. Right. They are. God they has really just made are. us they really are. social creatures. But it's even beyond the social aspect. It, it, it comes to a familial aspect of being the body of Christ um, together. And Pastor Lucas has here on the, out, on the outline, can someone be a Christian and not belong to a local church? Can someone be a Christian and not belong to a local church? Or, I mean, even, even in a real practical way, you know, we see the, the temptation to do virtual church you know we've been coming on sunday mornings and wednesday nights faithfully and in all of this and we we see this is this really church through a four inch piece of glass you know i uh, to be honest with you all that's really really hard for most preachers to preach to a video camera that I, i'm just <laughs> going to tell you right now i i cannot wait till this is over i mean i cannot wait until we are able to be back the way we're designed to be, to be face-to-face. Um, and so Pastor Lucas is, uh, is rightly asking us, well, let's talk about you know, this video experience, which is very meaningful to us and necessary mm-hmm. right now, Absolutely. but how does that compare to the local church gathered mm-hmm. and all that happens when we gather? I mean, do some people just want a nice, encouraging message and some nice music and reminds me of, you know, whatever? Or do we really want what God has designed? I, I don't know how you want to lead that. But. Yeah, so um, it, it's a thought. Can you, can you belong to the church if you're not physically gathered with the church? Um, so I would love to hear some of your thoughts. Um, I, I want to I preface by saying... Uh, there are some cases where a local church is just not available, right? right. Uh, there are some places in the world where there's no church, right? Or, or uh, there are places where, the, where, where the, a person may not have access to a local church. But can we just settle? That's not true of South Florida, right? right? right. It's right. not true of anyone in South Florida. We also want to keep in mind that there are people who are homebound, Right, and and That's we're right. not talking about this. If you're homebound and you're unable to leave your home, we're we're not talking about this case. We're talking about people that are able to come and go, and live in a place like South Florida. Um, can they belong? Can um, can can they be a Christian and not belong to a church? Can they be a Christian and just watch a video, turn it on and turn it off? for a couple of hours or minutes every week. So I'd love to hear uh, some of your thoughts on this. Well, I, while you're talking about this, it, it flashed before my eyes the contrast between the Catholic church that I grew up in and Sheridan Hills. Hmm. So Catholic church growing up, when the priest walked out, I mean, it was a stampede <laughs> to get ladies. out of there. I mean, literally, you could you had to fight to get out. And here, people never leave. People don't leave. Parking lot's full, you know, half an hour, hour after the service. Well, now, wait a minute. Quite honestly, there are some who bolt for the door. Well, and, you know, I've just and noticed I'm that. I'm calling them out right now security. by mentioning yeah, it yeah. right now. I'm calling them out right now. There are some <laughs> who, they are right with your, they're following the Catholic priest out the door. <laughs> right out the door. Um, so. Well, and I only started to notice that because usually we sat down front. But now that I pull some of the security uh I get to watch that now. I didn't right, realize right, that right, happened right, right. here. But I mean, but you're right. But the it's, vast but majority it's totally a different stay. And totally different feel. And like I was telling you earlier, when Kathleen and I go to some kind of a church event, event even if it's just lunch with somebody, we just block off three hours because we know that whatever we do with the church, it's going to be a three-hour event. And not because, not that that's a bad thing. It's just because we don't want to break contact. The engagement is so rich. 
regardless of what it is, we just enjoy being around the family. So we make sure that we have the time available yeah. to do that. You so know? that's a glad blocking off. The oh, time. it's totally yeah. glad blocking off of the time. And, and I didn't realize that that was a thing, honestly, before Sheridan Hills. And I think it's a wonderful thing. We love it. So Right. Yeah, I think it's it's important because it's during these times that so much ministry happens, True. right? So Absolutely. it's during these times that we're encouraging one another. It's when we're together that we're challenging one another. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's during these times that we may may point out to someone, "Hey, brother, I think I think uh, you are pursuing sin in your life, and I think this will lead you to destruction," right? So these things cannot happen when we are apart. Correct. Mm -hmm. So coming together and belonging is important. Mm -hmm. And we often see people after the service or before the service gather together with somebody, just two people over there praying about yes. something, or four or five people, six or seven people yes. gather together praying about something. There are some people who meet every week before Wednesday night just to pray together, or there's some who meet afterwards just to pray together. Um, that's when you see, okay, we really are brothers and sisters, mm -hmm. children of a holy God, and we are seeking to help one another do that. Yeah. So I, you know. I was thinking about this because Indy and I love watching the Food Network and the Cooking Channel. <laughs> And uh, I was just thinking, uh, what a difference it is to watch Bob Flay cook um, and just think, man, that must taste amazing. But then what about going to Bob Flay's, Bobby Flay's uh, restaurant and eating his food? Well, that's very different, isn't it? Yeah. And I think that that is, that is, that is the distinction between watching service yeah, online that's good. and that's good. actually... Uh, going to church, it's the mm -hmm. difference between watching the food channel and actually eating the food that they make in the food in the food network. Um, so I think that the experience is real rather mm -hmm. than virtual. The Bible actually assumes that we come together. The Bible yeah. several times in the New Testament says, when you come together, right? So there's an assumption that the churches would come together. And really the emphasis, one may say, oh, but I don't really need to. I'm okay. I'm okay with my walk with the Lord. Well, I would say, I would challenge the person that would say that to to actually uh, reconsider that because the Bible actually says that we should come together for the benefit of others. That's right. Right? Yeah, that's exactly where I was going. Um, in Hebrews chapter 10, Verse 24, it says, And let us consider how to stir up one another to, good, to love and good works, not neglecting to meet together, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another, and all the more as we see the day drawing near. Right. So yeah, that coming together and the, what, what Hebrews is telling us here is to stir one another up to love and good works. And to encourage one another, you know, as as we continue on in, in the And life. Pastor Jason, I think it's interesting in that particular passage of Scripture, which is the big go-to-church passage, okay? <laughs> right. But the, the, that passage, it says, let us not forsake the assembling of ourselves together. It doesn't say, for the preaching of the word. It doesn't say, for the singing of songs. Mm -hmm. It doesn't say, now, do we know that the preaching of the word is important? Absolutely. Just read your New Testament. You see everywhere we went, everywhere they went, preaching and teaching truth, because our, we live in a fallen world where there's lies, so we need God's truth in order to know him. So preaching of truth, holding up his word and telling the truth is vastly important. But it's very interesting to me, in the big go-to-church passage, it's saying, for the encouraging of one another. Mm -hmm. And so the encouraging of one another has come through preaching of the word, Sure, that's one of the ways in which we encourage one another is by preaching the word. But it's also done in singing to one another, mm -hmm. singing to the Lord, singing to yourself. I mean, we, we sing a few different directions when we sing. Um, it comes with seeing somebody and talking about the football game or talking about mm -hmm. Bob, who is it, Bob Filet? Bob Filet. Bob, Bob Filet. Filet. Bobby Filet. Okay, if Bobby you want to know about differences in like how two very different people can be very good friends, here we go. He's watching the cooking channel and I'm watching the press on regardless, press on regardless road race. You know, I'm watching racing and, and cooking okay awesome. great that's cool it's, it's awesome. also interesting to circle this back around to what pastor lucas was pointing us back to in romans because hebrews chapter 10 is all about christ's sacrifice 
for us, for, for all, right? And even here in verse 19, in the middle of the, of the chapter here, it says, Therefore, brothers, since we have confidence to enter the holy places by the blood of Jesus, by the new and living way that he opened for us through the curtain, that is through his flesh, and since we have a great high priest over the house of God, let us draw near, right? So in, in the drawing near, the, the love of God that allows us to come near uh, and, and his drawing of us and calling us out by the blood of Christ. So it's all together here in this passage as well as you think about the, the go to church passage yeah. as well. Yeah. And that, and I, I love that you brought up this verse, Pastor Jason, because isn't that what it means to grow in holiness, right? To encourage one another, right? And uh, so we 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 are challenging one another, mm-hmm. right? So so that's part of, you know, there are aspects of church that are wonderful, right? There are aspects of church that are that are challenging. When, when we need to be confronted, right? And encouragement has this positive aspect to it, but it also has this, man, we need to, we need to spur this person who is, who, who is lagging behind. We need to, to, to spur this person who is, who is believing false, falsehood. We need to spur this person to greater faith. So I think that this is what it means to grow in, in holiness here in Hebrews. It's that we come together to encourage one another. So I think that I think that's great. Now, some people may say, uh, well, I go to church. Yeah, sure. I arrive about five minutes early. I say hi to, to a couple people. Um, and, uh, and then I leave a couple of minutes late. Um, so what, what, what would we say to these people about going the next step? Perhaps some of them visit kind of inconsistently. Um, what, what does... So in, at Sheridan Hills, we talk about membership, right? We talk about meaningful membership. So what role does being a member of this church play in all of this? Why is it important to be a member? Why is it important not to just kind of touch base with the church once a week? Um, so is membership just a paper that we sign what is it? So, yeah. and so I think it's important that we think yeah, about Yeah, members about are far more than names on a list. I mean, we, we talk about that a lot. Um, it is names on a list, but it's far more than that. And it's this thing, and it's, it, it's, you know, you could make an argument of saying, well, if you come and you sit in the church and you stay for a couple minutes and then you leave, that I could make the argument that's not a real, real different than just watching through the video. Um, if, if you don't really have any no, of that interaction, like that. if you're one of those guys that's about to run over the priest getting out the door, <laughs> you know, and you can't wait to get to the parking lot and boom, I got it done. That's sounding a lot more like religion to me than relationship. Mm-hmm. And we talk a lot about the difference between having a, re- a religion where it's something you just go do where versus a relationship, which is something that you really are with God. You, you, you're a child of God. You're a child that has brothers and sisters around you. Um, we don't need more religion. We, the, there's plenty of religion. What we need is relationship. And I think that when we're talking about church membership, member, that, that's like mm-hmm. being there, we're, we're talking about not names on a list, but we're talking about a hand, an arm, mm-hmm. a leg. We're talking about a body. It's called the body of Christ, the body of our Lord Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm. And so we're talking about how, I mean, how valuable is your hand to you? Well, I'd rather not go through life without a hand. I know there's some people that have to. I know there's some people that have lost legs because of diabetes or a car wreck or something else. I mean, or, or, or an IED. Um, so we, we hate that. We don't want them to lose the members of our body. Um, it's that kind of intimacy, it's that kind of connection that Christians are to have with the body of Christ. And it's just a, such a sad thing when you see somebody that says, well, cultural Christianity says go to church. Biblical Christianity says be the church. That's right. And there's a massive difference mm-hmm. in those two things. It's I am the church 24-7 versus I go to the church at you know 9.30 to 11 or whatever it is, 11 to 12.30. I mean, that... There's two very different things. Um, so, well, so as, I, I was just thinking, it, that made me think, I mean, that kind of goes back to the leap, right? That's a leap mm-hmm. that you make from, 
from a, an engagement perspective. And I think that, uh, uh, you know, it's re it really requires you to kind of get out of your comfort zone to some, to some degree, uh, although it, it shouldn't because of the love generated in, in, this, in this body. And, and so I, I just think that, you know, there's a degree of openness. Uh, there's a degree of commitment that may scare some people. I don't know. Um, and, a, and a degree of intimacy, you know, and engagement that, that some people may be uncomfortable with. I can see that, you know, and, and that's where I would just say, well, just, just be open uh, because the, the warmth and the love and obviously God's presence in this church is, is evident. And, and so I just would encourage anybody who feels like that to kind of get over it. I was one of those guys. Well, I mean, Mr. Army. I mean, I was right? I was Mr. One of those Combat things, Engineer. You know, the, yeah. and and I mean, my my, um, I don't, you know, virtual. It's a virtual smorgasbord of friends that you have now of believers that I never would have hung out with. Mm. Some of these folks, I, you know, I never would have met them. Right. Right. Just because of the circles that I traveled in. So there's an awareness of who is a part of the church, right? That mm -hmm. the membership brings about. And even as we think, sure, the word membership is not in the New Testament, but the concept is everywhere. Right. In the book of Acts, as people would come to faith, there would be the Bible says that they would be added to the numbers in the church. Right. Mm -hmm. When when John speaks in first John, he says they went out from you because they were never of you. So there's an understanding that there is an of you. When Paul speaks of some people in the New Testament, they say, uh, th this dear brother, uh, he is from you, talking about a specific local church. So there's this understanding that people belong to different bodies of, of these expressions, of local expressions of the, of the universal uh, church. So the mm. concept is everywhere. The concept of people belonging mm. to churches is everywhere. Keyword, keyword, right. belong. I belong. Right. I, I belong there. You know, like That's with right. my family. I belong with my family. When you get separated from your family and you, you miss them and you go, why? Well, because, man, I belong with mm. them. I, it was meant for me to be with them. And that's... Yeah. That's that's part of the reason we long to be with each other mm -hmm. because we belong together in the church. We've heard a lot of people say, I mean, listen to this. Uh, Amy Middleton uh, stopped by the church office and she dropped something off and she just said, uh, Pastor Andrew, thank you for the Wednesdays and Sundays. I feel almost like we are at church. you know. Right. And I praise God that Miss Middleton is saying, it doesn't feel like we're at church. Mm -hmm. right. It feels... Almost like we're at church. And that's because she's well acquainted with us. She knows. She's been here for years. She loves the church. I mean, that picture is all there. Uh, she says, I miss you all. Hmm. Um, that's language of God's love. That's the language of the way it's supposed to be. And so, man, yeah, it's just so much more than names on a list. It's so much more than showing up to a service. It's it's been there. But, you know, Pastor Lucas, I go back to that question that some people are going, wait a minute, are you guys going to answer the question that you ask? Can someone be a Christian and not belong to a local church? I think my main answer to that is probably not for long. I think what God does, if he's really made us to be his, he puts within us a longing to be with his people. And if that longing isn't there, if it's, oh, I know Jesus, and I'm good, I, I, I would say, wow, wait a minute. I'm wondering if you really know the Lord. I'm not the Holy Spirit, and I'm not the judge. God is the judge. God's the Holy Spirit, and he'll be able to sort you out. But to me, the Bible I read shows me that Jesus said, if you love me, then feed my sheep. If you love me, love what I love. Mm -hmm. If you love me, do what I say. And the things that Jesus said was that you would love one another. And if you don't love one another, it makes me wonder how you can love him. So, um, 
That's my answer to that. Yeah, and and I agree. Just like a member cannot live for too long outside the body, right? A finger wouldn't be able to. Mm. Perhaps quickly you can reattach a finger to the body and will live. It's not dead. Um, yeah, but um, mm. but uh, a, a finger dies, right? Yeah, uh, dies mm -hmm. if it's not attached to the body. So perhaps we could bring this uh, th this uh, uh, conversation here to an end, just w with these thoughts. If someone came up to you and said, "Look, when it's safe to gather again and, and the church is meeting again, why do you? Why should I gather with the church? Why shouldn't I just settle for online services or for mm. YouTube preachers? Uh, why?" So, if somebody asks you this question, um, uh, what what would you say? What would you say to this person? I might send them to Emily Middleton <laughs> and say, "Go ask Mrs. Middleton <laughs> right. why that's not a good idea." I mean, because she will tell you, um, as we've kind of been rehearsing here a little bit, that there's, there's just so much more than watching people worship and, and watching in that way. It, there's so much more to engaging. Now, uh, yeah, I, I asked the question again, but I... I, I, well, uh, and I just, well, talking about that, I, you know, I just, we love you and we want you with us. Right. We love you. And we want you with us. That's really why we want you there. But I mean, all the feedback that uh, I've received from either the growth group or the uh, uh, community group or even the guys who are working over here in the worship center is, man, we just cannot wait to get right. back. Right. And, and so just that right there is evidence enough. I mean, that's, that's what I would tell a person who said, well, why should I do well? Because more people than not really just can't wait to get back so uh, you might want to at least try it once you right, know? right 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 yeah, so that's good yeah i i thought the same thing i thought my answer would be because i need you yeah, yeah. Uh, it's not because you need me even though you do right <laughs> uh, but it's because i need you i need you to be here to encourage me we need one another for for encouragement we need one another to grow in holiness Apart from the church, it would be really hard to grow in holiness. Mm. But right. with the church, we sure. receive the means of grace that we need. Yeah. You know, one of our mentors um, has has said, and, and I'll never forget, I probably heard, it seven, heard him say it seven or eight years ago. He said, hey, you know, if you had to have, if you had to make a choice between having your quiet time, by that I mean your devotion time, that, that would mean reading your Bible and spending some moments in prayer. If you had to make a choice between having a quiet time, personal time with God, and going to church, which one should you do? And my standard answer growing up would have always been, oh, have your quiet time. Your time with God is most, you, you and God alone, da, 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 da. And this guy said, absolutely not. You need to go to church. And then he unpacked why he said being in the church family and being with the church on a very regular basis is so much safer than depending upon your own mm -hmm. discipline by yourself mm -hmm. to be with God. Because if you break down in your discipline to be with God, no one knows that, right. and you are vulnerable, and you may not be able to turn yourself back from all kinds of deception, all kinds of discouragement, all kinds of disillusionment. But if you are with brothers and sisters in Christ who know you and know what you're going through, and they know that you are professing Christ and that you want to be God's child and you desire to do that, they're going to help you. And when you're not there... They go, hey, where is he? Where is she? That's right. And you know, this is this is why people with jobs that cause their attendance here to be very erratic, you know, I really pray for them. Because whether they're police officers or army or flight attendants or, you know, whatever it is where they do shift work, it, it can be that people get to where they don't know whether she's supposed to be here. They don't know whether he's supposed to be here. And before very long, no one is calling up and saying, hey, where were you? Right. You know, 
there are some people that are involved in this church that if they don't show up, we call 911. And we say, look for them. Something's wrong. And why? Because they're like, they're just always here. Well, those are the people who, quite honestly, just tend to be rock solid. The young families that I'm seeing adopt that more and more, I, I just see that they're, they're becoming rock. You know, I think about the Loudons. They've raised five kids here. Mm-hmm. And Bill and Kim were often the first to show up. They live way up north of here, somewhere like in Orlando or something. I don't know. <laughs> way north of here. And they have driven down here for 25 years probably five days a week. Mm -hmm. And they have ministry to people in their neighborhood. There are multiple, you say, oh, well, they're just church people. That's all they do. Oh, no. They've allowed their church life to flow out into their neighborhood. And there are people in this church who have come to faith in Jesus and have been baptized and are walking with the Lord in this church because they've done that. Now, they haven't been hurt by being here a lot. In fact, their five kids walk with the Lord in their 20s. Um, Bill and Kim have just simply sought to be faithful to the Lord in this. You look at the engagement of their lives, and it has paid huge dividends. Huge. Huge dividends. I mean, that's what, that's what it's done. And I, I just look at that, and I, I just say, man... Praise God for the way he's designed the church. May we be faithful in the church. May we, may we embrace the church in, in every way. Is there any other word you want to add, brother? I, I just, well, I just when you mentioned the quiet time uh, versus coming to church, all, all I could think of was the, 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 the church experience pr- offers a compounding effect of your quiet time, right? Mm. So it's it's Amen. like it's like your quiet time. Good word. It's like a qui- your quiet time on steroids, right? Because well, you're still kind of quiet because you're not talking. You should be, you know, yeah. listening to pastor. You're singing praise and worship. You you're surrounded by people who are sharing in your quiet time. Yeah. Uh, who are worshiping with you. So it's, it's the compounding effect, you know, can't be denied and it's certainly you know, yeah, a, a, a thousand times better than your quiet time is going to be. Mm. Amen. And and yet, you know, my quiet time is real important. Sure. I'm not saying you shouldn't have quiet time. You know, the the the, 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 the craziness of that of that dilemma is you don't have to ha- either make a decision between having a time with God and to, he was just simply pointing out right church attendance and church involvement and church connection is not a small thing. And in fact, it's a, a very, very significant thing that causes us to be near to God. I, I will say that, you know, our time alone with God in the Word, in prayer, is hugely important. And quite honestly, the whole corona thing has caused so many people in the church, I believe, to realize this. Hmm. And I believe that when this restarts, I, I hope and pray that we have a transformed church. And even right now, I am in my mind praying for you and your commitment to the Christian discipline of worship together with God's people, that you would say, I am going to be disciplined to be with God's people because I need that. You know, there's some people that moved away from Sheridan Hills maybe even years ago, and they're watching online and whatever, and they remember the way it was when they were here. And they, they remember that. And even when we were together for the 50th, I, I just asked, I felt com- led by the Lord to ask the question. Uh, many of you have come back home. You taught Sunday school or you taught in some way. You did something. And then you moved away and you never really connected with a church family. You say, well, there wasn't another Sheridan Hills. And I would say, I, I know that feeling. I know, I know how that can be. But, you know, God has maybe sent you out as a missionary um, from Sheridan Hills to help another church really be all that it can be. And I guarantee if we will pray, if you will pray, and if you will show up for service, God will meet you there. And he will work through you and in you. Um, and he will, he will really do a work through you. Um, if you will simply be faithful to that. Um, I believe that that's what he wants to do in all of us. So um, may we just simply be faithful to 
um, engaging with the body of Christ and really, really recognizing that um, in every way. Uh, I want to pray for this and just ask God that would do, that He would do this, and then I'll, I'm going to make a couple of quick, um, important announcements at the end. So let's pray together. Just bow your head right where you are. Let's pray together. Holy Father, I do pray that you would allow your word to stick in our hearts even right now. And for some of us right now, we need to really just repent of maybe certain attitudes or certain actions um, that, that you've put your finger on in our hearts during this time. Maybe we've been hearing the still small voice inside of us saying, you need that, you need that, you need that. And then there's another voice that says, oh, but is it really for you? Can you really have that? Or, or you're, it'll take too much. Or nobody, nobody will accept you. Or, or you know, there are all these voices against that. But Lord, your voice quietly calling people to yourself. I, I pray that we would hear and know your voice and obey it. Um, Lord, cause us to walk in your ways together with the body of Christ. And I pray that Sheridan Hills would be healthier, <laughs> healthier because of this virus. I pray, Lord, that our church would be truly a more healthy church because we have given attention to these things and because we've longed for one another. And maybe for some of us, because we've learned to love people in our community group or in our growth group in a way that we maybe never have before. So, Lord, I pray for this. Help us to be the true church. Melt our hearts, um, cause the parts that want to rebel to submit, and just help us, Lord, to uh, experience all that you've created for, for us to experience. Lord, we want to continue to pray for members of our church that are serving those who are sick, whether with COVID or with other illnesses. I, I pray that you would sustain the medical community, um, and I pray that you would uplift them and encourage them. And Lord, I pray for our politicians. Um, Lord, I know that there's great political um, and ideological fights going on right now. And Lord, we pray that right and good decisions would come even above all of that and that you would use them as you would choose to use them, Lord, even here in Hollywood and Pembroke Pines and Davie and Miami and Aventura and Lord, the surrounding areas, Lord, we pray for our leaders locally. And uh, Lord, at the state level, we pray for them. And Lord, at the national level, we just continue to ask, Lord, that you would cause them to make the right decisions. Mm -hmm. And that would be good, Lord, for the people. And Lord, we pray that we'd bring your kingdom. We do ask, Lord, that your kingdom would come and that your will would be done. Lord, we anxiously await for you to return. Mm -hmm and to take us home. Um, Lord, we've sung about that tonight. I thank you that so many of our hymns talk about heaven. And uh, Lord, cause us to long for your coming, long for your appearing, I pray. Lord, thank you for Chuck. Thank you for his life. Thank you for saving him. Thank you for allowing him to share his, his testimony tonight of your work in his life. He and Kathleen, Lord, we, we bless you for them and for all the ones that they represent tonight. I think about Billy and Jesse Johns. I think about Edward and Jessica Norquez. Lord, I think about the Simus. I think about the Capellas. I think about, Lord, just an endless array of your children that are serving faithfully in the life of the church. We thank you. In the glorious name of Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, what a rich time. I, I hope and pray that you're inviting people to join us. Um, online, and who knows, as you invite them to join us online, uh, maybe you can also help them join us uh, in person um, someday. Um, we are looking at doing some gentle openings as time goes on. We're just really wanting to be careful about that for a lot of different reasons. We, we want um, to uh, faithfully serve the Lord in our community and so we want to be careful with that. We'll keep you posted as that opens up. We'll be, we'll be worshiping online again this coming Sunday. So just uh, get ready as you would normally. If you would like to join a growth group by Zoom, and you say, I don't even know what that means, but there's groups that are meeting virtually by something called Zoom. If you would like to do that, if you would say, hey, sign me up for a growth group, just send a message to info 
at SheridanHills.org. You say, well, I've never been to your church. Or you might say, I'm in Canada or I'm in Taiwan. Well, if you want to get up in the middle of the night and come to church, we'd love for you to do that. Um, but wherever you, we, we're open to having you join us by Zoom. Um, just send a message to info at SheridanHills.org. And uh, we, will, we will try to help you get hooked up to do that. And uh, who knows, over a period of time, if you're somewhere else, maybe we can help you find a great church in your area. We do that all the time. We help people find Bible-teaching churches in their community. Um, we know how to do that, and we would be glad to help you do that. So um, also, uh, just other things coming up. Uh, we're looking at family camp in June. We are looking at doing that. We're, we're making some final details on that. So mid-June, uh, dates on that are June 15th, somewhere around there. Uh, so 14th we'll, through 18, man? 14 through 18, he's saying. We'll keep you posted on that. Um, just want to continue to encourage you to reach out to the people in your community group, church members, be church members. Reach and love the people that are near you. Um, uh, we really want to encourage you to make sure that everybody's doing well um, in, the, in your neighborhood. So God bless you, Sheridan Hills. We do love you, and uh, we look forward to finally being together before very long. We'll see you Sunday morning.